Scary Mysteries Twisted News, Stephen Pankey and Dennis Nilsson. Terrifying cases of true crime and strange events. Every week, Twisted News dives into two mysterious and scary cases currently happening in our world. For this week, we'll look into the controversial arrest of Stephen Pankey and the terrifying murder spree of a man from the UK. Get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted News. Number 1. Stephen Pankey Before we get to know Stephen, we must first be acquainted with Janelle Matthews, one of the famous children whose faces were printed on milk cartons sold around the 1980s. Janelle was the adopted daughter of Jim and Gloria Matthews. From Camarillo, California, the family moved to Colorado in 1978 after Jim took up a teaching job at an academy in Greeley. As devout Christians, the household attended Sunnyview Church of the Nazarene, where their 12-year-old daughter was a choir member. She also sang for Franklin Middle School, where she attended as a 7th grader. On December 20, 1984, Janelle took part in the school's choir performance. Her family, however, wasn't there to witness her big event. At that time, Jim was at his older daughter's basketball game while Gloria had flown to be with her ill grandfather. At around 8 p.m., Janelle arrived home after getting a ride from her friend's father. Shortly after that, she answered a phone call from her dad, but this would be the last time that anyone ever spoke to her. Later that evening, when Mr. Matthews arrived home, he found the garage door open and his daughter was nowhere in sight. Alarmed, he called the police, and when they arrived at around 10 p.m., they found footprints in the snow which indicated that the perpetrator had been peering in the windows. The investigation, however, found no signs of a forced entry or struggle. Police placed Janelle's biological mother, Terry Vieira Martinez, under surveillance under suspicion of kidnapping. But circumstances prove Martinez's innocence and so, with no other clues to go on, the case went cold. For more than 30 years, no one knew what happened to the girl. That is, until July 23, 2019, when oil field workers stumbled upon the remains of Janelle at an oil and gas site not too far from her home in Weld County, Colorado. She had been shot in the head, and this shocking discovery brought in an insurmountable amount of new chilling revelations evidence that would point to an affluent public figure as the perpetrator. The person in question is a rather sketchy individual named Steve Pankey, a former Greeley resident. Back in 1976, while working as a security guard, he was reported for beating up two underage students. After being let go, he went on to sell cars, only to get fired, and then he went on to become a full-time pastor at none other than Sunnyview Church of the Nazarene, the same church Janelle's family had attended. During that time, he was accused of raping and impregnating a church member, and in 1978 he jumped to another job from which he was fired afterwards as well. He had several encounters with police on various disturbance complaints, and in fact, a day before Janelle disappeared, Pankey was arrested on suspicion of harassment and trespassing. Pankey, who formerly lived about two miles from the Matthews residence, denied having known the victim until her disappearance made it to the news. He said that he and his family were in Big Bear Lake in California from December 21st to the 26th of 1984 for a holiday vacation. His ex-wife, however, told authorities that the trip was rather unexpected and rushed. He even dumped the family dogs in haste prior to their trip. When they came back, he immediately began digging into their yard. Two days later, his car caught on fire, and he disposed of it at a local salvage yard. In the years since Janelle's disappearance, Pankey has been making several public statements conveying his innocence, as well as sharing intriguing information about what happened to the girl. But the more he talked, the more guilty he seemed. For instance, he told police about a rake that was used to hide shoe impressions in the snow. 
He also talked about a missing piece of blanket that disappeared from the Matthews house. Both of these were pieces of information, though, that the police never revealed to the public. Despite the lack of any physical evidence tying him to the case, Idaho police raided Pankey's home in Twin Falls, Idaho in September of 2019. There, they found multiple search attempts for information regarding Jonell's abduction and murder on his computer. Meanwhile, a video recording was confiscated that contained footage taken in 2008 showing the suspect attending his son's funeral. That year, his son was murdered by his girlfriend in California, and in the video, the grief-stricken father can be heard saying, I hope God didn't allow this to happen because of Jonell Matthews. On October 13, 2020, the office of Weld District Attorney Michael Rourke served an arrest warrant to Steve Pankey, who is now 69 years old, on suspicion of murder and kidnapping. He is currently held at the Ada County Jail in Idaho, awaiting extradition to Weld County, where he will face charges for first-degree murder, second-degree kidnapping, and illegal possession of firearms. Number 2. Dennis Nilsson. Dennis Nilsson's childhood wasn't a very pleasant one. His parents divorced when he was just four years old and he was forced to live with his grandparents, whom he loved dearly. So when his grandfather passed away, that's when Dennis first truly set into a deep state of depression. The traumatizing viewing of the man's corpse in the funeral home allegedly led to his behavioral psychopathology later in life. Growing up, Dennis became aware of his homosexual tendencies, but chose to keep them a secret. He enlisted in the Army and later, in 1972, joined the police force. There, he discovered his weird fascination with some of the dead and dismembered bodies stored in the morgue. Shortly after, he would resign from the force, perhaps in a bid to rid himself of the morbid thoughts from the morgue. In 1975, he met and lived together with David Galishin in a garden apartment at 195 Melrose Avenue in North London. Their relationship ended two years later, and Nilsson sat around drinking heavily. And a year and a half later is when he committed his first murder in that very same apartment. On December 29, 1978, Dennis had met a young man and brought him home. The next morning, terrified of being left alone, he strangled his visitor with a tie and then drowned him in a bucket of water. He spent another night with the corpse before deciding to hide it under his floorboards for the next seven months, after which he removed and burnt the remains in his back garden. About a year later, Kenneth Ockenden a Canadian tourist stumbled into a pub on December 3rd, 1979. Dennis was there and the two got to talking. They went back to Dennis's apartment where he then strangled the man. He performed sexual acts on the cold, lifeless body over and over again for the next several months. The third very unlucky person was Martin Duffy. On May 13, 1980, Nilsson invited the homeless 16-year-old inside his flat, where he strangled and drowned him. Like what he did on the other two, the killer acted upon his necrophiliac desires on the new corpse before dumping him under the floorboards as well. Over the next few months, more dead bodies got buried under the cursed floorboards, and by 1981, Nilsson claims to have killed 12 men. Most of his victims were homeless or unemployed, down on their luck types just looking for a roof over their head. He soon ran out of space to store the dead bodies and thus forced to chop them up. Some he boiled to remove the flesh and the organs which he would later put in plastic bags for disposal. He would then bury the limbs in his garden. Other times he would make a bonfire to burn up the bodies. The remaining bones he then would crush on the ground. In 1982, he moved to another apartment located at 23 Cranley Gardens, which was also in North London. He would claim three more male victims here before the end of 1983. In order to get rid of those bodies, 
Nilsson would boil the limbs and mince the remaining parts into very tiny pieces that he could flush down the toilet. This, however, resulted in the very thing that would put an end to his killing spree. In February of 83, one of the residents called for maintenance to check on a drain blockage. Much to the horror of those present, they found it was rotting human remains clogging up the drain. They decided to call for a police inspection, which was scheduled for the following day. Aware on the possibility of his capture, Nilsson worked entirely that night to clear up the drain, and a neighbor downstairs caught him doing so and became suspicious. On February 9th, the detective made some routine interrogations on the people living in the complex. Upon entering Nilsson's apartment, that investigator was greeted with a horrendous foul odor that filled the entire place. He asked the owner, who, much to his surprise, calmly confessed about the two dismembered bodies he'd been keeping inside his place. Upon confirmation of his claims, he was arrested on that same day. During his detainment, and much to the chagrin of his legal counsel, he disclosed a gargantuan amount of details about his killing spree, including those that he had murdered at his old address. On October 24, 1983, his trial then began. Dennis was charged with six counts of murder and two charges of attempted murder. He pleaded not guilty to all charges, much to the confusion of the jury. He cited diminished responsibility due to a mental defect, an argument that was later on refuted by the prosecution. On November 4, 1983, Nelson was found guilty of all the crimes and was sentenced to life behind bars. He died on May 12, 2018, while still incarcerated at the HMP Full Sutton. A recent AMC show titled Dez by David Tennant tells of the troubled life and murderous exploits of Dennis if you're interested in learning more. So there were two of the most shocking and horrendous crime stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted News is sure to show you why. If you like this video, then please subscribe because every week we're putting out new mysterious videos for you to check out. And make sure to listen to the Scary Mysteries in Every Town podcast as well for more chilling stories. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.